A few years ago, I made a video called Five Cuts to a Perfect Crosscut Slit, where I show you the five cut method and also giving you my formula for calculating the error and making the adjustments. Since then, I had many requests for me making a video on the miter slit. Now, I hesitated on that for a couple of reasons. Uh, first, I was new to YouTube, so when I posted that video, uh, there were a lot of positive comments and very supportive, but there was a few that was pretty negative and downright nasty. Um, they were saying, like, you're, you're making it way too complicated. We're not sending it to the moon. It's not rocket science. Um, you know, I have one person saying that uh, woodworking is supposed to be fun, and your video just totally ruined it for me. I even have one person say, why don't you take your math and just shove it up your you-know-what. And so I said, wow, welcome to YouTube. So early on, I learned that haters will always hate. So a couple of years later, after my video came out, I started to notice that there are other people on YouTube using my formula to make their own slate videos. So I thought, well, it can't be that complicated. They're using it and they're accepting it. And also had a couple of emails from woodworking magazines from other countries asking me for permission to see if they can write an article based on my video, that they would give me credit and also reference it back to my video. Of course, I was flattered and I said, you know, of course. And uh, thanks for asking because it shows integrity. And I just also want to thank all the people on YouTube that actually used it and referenced it back to me. I really appreciate that. So today, I'm going to show you how I make my miter sled so that you can cut perfect 45s on either side without using a whole lot of math. Okay, now I promise you, I will keep it as simple as possible. I want my sled to be able to cut all my 45s on one side. I will put it together and it should fit. I don't want to have to cut one on the left and then one on the right just so that I can cancel out any discrepancies to get my 90. Sometimes it's just a hassle to have to keep track of which side I cut, especially when you start doing a little bit more complicated joints like these. Now, can you imagine trying to keep track of all this? That would be insane. Sometimes you don't have a choice. Like this piece here, sometimes I have to cut one on the right and then flip it over and cut this on the left. To keep track of all this and which side I cut, now I'm gonna make a couple of miter slits. One of them is gonna be an attachment for your existing sled. And then I'm going to make one that's totally separate. There's advantage and disadvantages. Now, you know that a triangle has three sides with three angles, totaling 180 degrees. In my previous five cut sled video, I said that if you have a sled that's dialed in and can cut a perfect 90, this angle is taken care of. And all we have to do is calculate for our two 45s. I'm going to do that using your basic trick function. Now, I promise no complicated math. So I'm not going to get into the sine and cosine and all that other stuff. Because all we need to know is that if we have a 90 degree here and the length of A is equal to the length of B, then these two angles will be equal. And so in our case, it will be 45 degrees. So to make a miter attachment for your existing crosscut slit, I'm going to start off with a piece of plywood. I'm going to make my first cut so I can get a nice clean edge. And then I'm going to flip it around, put it against my fence, and then make my second cut. This will give me my perfect 90. Now, by now, you probably realize that I'm going to need a sled to make this jig. So if you haven't made one yet, you might want to go to my other video. It's called Five Cuts to a Perfect Crosscut Sled. There I will give you detailed instructions on how to build one. I will show you the calculation for error and also make the proper adjustment. So the more accurate your sled is, the better your jig's going to turn out. So if you're between two and three thousandths of an inch off per cut, I would say don't worry about it. That's good enough. If you can get it better than that, then that's going to be better for you. Now that we got our 90, the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that this distance, which I call A, is equal to this distance, which I call B. So I'm going to take my sled off, put this up against my fence, make this cut, put this side up against my fence and make this cut. Then this way I know that A will equal to B. So I just finished my cut. Now I know what some of you might be thinking. 
I'm going to make a cut from point to point, get my triangle. I'm going to put this up against my fence, and then there's my miter slat. Well, I'm not going to do that. First of all, it's very difficult to make a perfect cut from point to point. Secondly, it's kind of a waste of material and also adds weight to my sled. Besides, I can make three miter fences out of this piece. Here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to set my fence to two inches. I'm going to cut it on this side, stop shy. I'm going to cut it on this side and stop shy and then finish it with a bandsaw. Then I'll repeat myself and get two more fences out of this. So here's my 90 degree. I'm going to cut this one and then I'm going to cut this one. I mark it out so it'll be a good inch away from here. So I will stop shy of that. Then here's my 90, I'm going to put this against the fence. So here's my first one. I'm going to get two more out of this. So here are my three pieces. The next thing I want to do now is to cut a um, dust relief on the bottom here. I change over to my flat top blade. So as you can see, it's much easier to get my two points of contact by setting the fence and cutting my V-shape. The length on the outside is the same as the length on the inside. And by cutting both of these sides without changing the fence setting, they are both identical. To make the cut from corner to corner perfectly is not easy. Now to test it out, I'm going to put my angle up against my fence. If your sled is dead on 90, I can cut on either side to get a perfect 45. If your sled is slightly off from 90, like this, I'll show you how to calculate and make the proper adjustment. So here's my two cut method. First you get a piece of scrap wood, either four or five inches in width. Your first cut is on your sled to get your 90. From here, you take it to your miter sled and cut off the corner. Now try to cut close to the tip. Don't cut over. This will be your A side and this will be your B side. Just like a miter fence, this is the A and this is the B. Once you've cut it, we can measure it. And if A equals B, you've got a perfect miter on either side because we split your 90 degree fence perfectly in half. So let's test it out. This will be A, and this will be B. 
This is A, and this is B. All right, let's measure this. Now the key is you have to make sure that you hold your caliper right here instead of trying to go like this because it's not easy to keep this steady. So I'm going to hold it right here, put this piece up against my fence on this side, and I'm just going to move it until it stops, okay? Right about there. Okay, so it reads um, 3, 8, 0, 6, or 6 and a half, almost 7. So now I'm going to do this side, but I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to put this up, put this up against my fence. Hold it tight, and oh my gosh, it's exactly 0.06 and a half. So I'm I'm pretty much nuts on there. Okay, so I got lucky with this one. I made this slit not too long ago, and I was able to dial it into within half a thousandth of an inch after my fifth cut, which makes it a little easier for me to do perfect miters. Now I'm going to show you how to calculate and make the adjustment just in case the cut didn't come out perfect. I'm going to do that by making a totally separate dedicated miter slit where my fence does not have a chance to be uh, squared off with my blade. So my runners are in place. Now remember the runners has to be perfect, not too tight and not too loose. I've shown how to cut it perfectly in my five cut slit video so I'm not going to go through it here. I'm going to place my base right in the center of my saw curve. I'm cutting miters here, so I don't need to offset my slit. I'm just going to align it flush to the table back here, or you can put your table saw fence up here and just align it to that, it doesn't matter. So my fence will be flush against the back here. I'm not worried that if this is 90 to the blade. Just make sure that your fence is long enough so that it would hit these two points but not too long where it gets in the way when you put your workpiece here. So let me just quickly put this all together. So you're probably wondering why my miter set is so big. Well, I have two slits in my shop. I have a big one like this for cutting big stock like these. And then also make a really small one using my last fence for cutting small joints like these. I, I make it nice and small so it'll be very light. So let's calibrate this. So the first thing is I want to square off my test pieces so I can get my 90. Okay, so here we go. Here's my 90. I'm going to put it out here. Okay, here we go. Okay, 
So this is my A, this is my B, so this is my A, this is my B. So let's take a measure and see what we get. Let's measure A first. And it looks like right there, 3.839. This is 3.839. Let's see what B measures to. Go like this, but I'm going to flip it around for B. And let's see for B. Okay, that's 8.828. Eight point eight two eight. So we're eleven thousandths of an inch smaller on the B side. So let me give you the formula. So the formula is A minus B divided by two for the two angles, divided by the width of your test piece. In my case, is four inches. And then you multiply that by the length of your miter fence. In my case, is sixteen inches. is A, 8.839 minus B, which is 8.828 divided by two, and then divided by four, times that by 16, and my error is 22. So I'm 22 thousandths of an inch too short on the B side. So I found 22 thousandths of an inch on my feeler gauge. I'm gonna put it on the side that's short, which is my B side. So I'm just going to put it right here, lay this up against there, make sure this is centered. Now I want to make sure that this is my square angle. I'm not sure about this side, so the square side has to be out this way. I can't cut it like this because like I said, I don't know if this side is square. So here we go. Right about there. Okay, let's see what we got. Here's my A and here's my B. Let's measure the A. Let's measure the A. It reads um, 3.824. Let's see what the B says. 3.824. And 8.823 and a half, almost 4. So I'm nuts on. So if you're happy with the calibration from here, I just put a couple of dabs of glue on the bottom, let it sit, let it tack up, and then screw it down. I would probably prefer having my screw coming from the bottom up. So there you have it, very simple. So I think I kept the video in the process pretty simple in that I've shown you how to make a miter that you can cut perfect 45s on either side. I hope the video was helpful. Please share it with someone and don't forget to tell them where you learned it from. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.